Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Um, all right. Well, we're kind of unprepared, I think, for this one. Yeah, um, maybe, maybe not. We'll but see. we've got our whiskey, and so... We definitely have our whiskey. We should be fine. And we're ready to chat. <laughs> I'm going to... Hopefully, you don't all hear this, but I'm going to move this microphone a little bit. All right. There we go. That's... I think that's better. So why that's better? I feel like it is. <laughs> Whether it is it, or not. Yeah, it may or may not. So... Um, all right. Well, so, where did you you wanted to get started? Well, I was going to start by mentioning your latest publication. Oh yeah. Um, so I had an article uh, called "The Last Man" published at at the Libertarian Institute. Um, so that's available there. Everybody, yeah. go take. Please a look. check it out. Yeah. It's that's it's a very good. I, I enjoyed it, and I I felt like it was for the time. It was a very timely article. Yeah, I feel and like I can do better, but. Uh, well, it was definitely the right one for the right time. I mean, it captured the whole, you know, the anniversary of 9-11 and, you know, the Afghan war. Yeah. Know? So, um, and kind of where we're at with it, because that's kind of what we wanted to lead off talking about today was, you know, the peace deal has failed. Like. Yeah. Well, and you told me to uh, talk about foreign policy at the beginning, and I, and I was thinking you probably didn't mean the uh, USA basketball team losing to France in the quarterfinals <laughs> of the Basketball World Cup. What? Yeah. No, that's that's, that's, that's pretty. That's, that's definitely not what I meant. <laughs> it's, it's big news, and it's terrible. We're just yeah, you know, we're well. we're the defending champions. Have been for a long time. Yeah. Lost to France. Did we really? Lost to France in the quarterfinal. We didn't even make it to the semifinal or the final. Ouch. Quarterfinal. Ouch. Yeah, that hurts. There was apparently a bunch of controversy said- in putting together the basketball team this year. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. Ten years ago, I would have paid a whole lot of attention to it. But yeah. No, well, I, I just don't, don't they always that. have a lot of controversy around that? Isn't that usually something that they have an issue with? Uh, honestly, I don't know. Um, I, mean, I don't know either. I mean, I, I think that it's certainly changed since, uh, was it the 92? I don't remember. Um, whenever the first Olympics where we sent professional basketball players, the, the original yeah. dream team, yeah. um, I think it has been at least a little bit controversial since then because uh, those guys have to measure – like the public outcry of being a non-patriot by refusing to play on the team and yeah. the potential earnings they could lose if they get injured doing this thing that they don't really have to do instead of their career where they make millions of dollars a year. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm i kind of with you on that. I'm kind of like, those guys should go play that game. I mean, mm-hmm. come on. But, I mean, I get not wanting to, sitting it out and, you know, preserving your health and whatnot yeah you know but it's i mean basketball is physically demanding but it's not like football i mean well you also don't wear pads in basketball and i yeah. i would suggest that um that basketball is surprisingly violent if you play i'm sure it is i don't watch a lot <laughs> i'm not a big basketball fan for anybody that wants yeah. to know it's not not my sport i'm like I said, it, uh, i'm not a basketball person at all so. yeah I, I played in high school um both of the schools, both of the high schools that I went to, yeah. and uh, yeah, it, it can it, it can, can be, be rough. It can get it can get pretty rough. <laughs> it can be rough. Yeah, uh, but uh, it's that's really beside the point. I think if your country asks you to to go play, like, yeah, come on. I mean, it's it's a little different yeah. than if your country asks you to pick up a gun, go halfway around the world. Yeah. But like, if your country asks you to like. Repres- Go play this represent game. us in this game that you play <laughs> yeah. for a living. Halfway right? around the world, then you know yeah. it just seems like you you kind of go do that. It would be polite to yeah. accept. I agree. Um, but uh, no, um, Trump. Yes, Trump pulled out of the deal with Afghanistan. I'm. I, I was right on the edge of saying this is the new worst thing that he's done. I don't think so. I think the yeah. pulling out of the Iran deal is still the worst thing that he's done. Yeah. Um, but this is a close second now. Uh, we yeah. were right on the edge. Uh, yeah. By all accounts, the deal was was all but signed. Everything I've seen says that. that and um, it was it was all ready to go. Yeah, we are right on the verge of finally getting out of this pointless war that we've been involved in for 18 years. Basically, and, get. I mean, we were going to leave a, a small amount of people over there, but I mean, this would have been a huge win. Yeah, that would have been it, a step in... It would have been a serious, way. serious step in the right direction. Yeah. So, uh, but he, you know, he got all offended 
um, said because the Taliban took credit for a uh, car bombing that killed 12 people, including a U.S. Um, uh, a Serviceman. sergeant yeah, in the yeah. army. And But it, it's just hypocritical because it's not like we stopped bombing them when well, we were negotiating. We <coughs> continued the drone war, continued yep. the air war. We're... Like we've been bombing them this whole time too. So until the deal is signed, like there's no truce. Yeah, and it's not like that. It was. It was. It, there was a truce going on that we were in the middle of it, and they violated anything. I mean, they yeah. didn't. I mean, we're the the war was still raging on. Yeah, and so. if anything, actually, I would say that it shows why they should continue to prosecute their war until the deal is signed. Yeah, because you know. <laughs> this sounds terrible, but like from their perspective, they could have missed weeks of killing other people. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> you know, expecting this deal to be signed, and then yeah. Trump pulls out of it at the last moment. It's well, not like you can trust him. Yeah, no, it's true. It's definitely true, and it's you make a good point because it's why would they stop if we didn't? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the argument I would make. I mean, it takes in order to have a truce, you actually have to sit down and have a truce. It's not one of those deals where. Okay, since we're talking, we're not going to... Unless you're talking about having a truce, and that's where you start at. But that's not how this was arranged. No, not at all. Um, so, I mean, it, it doesn't make much sense. It, it really doesn't. So, there's a lot of messes going on over there, as usual, though. I, you know, we're, we're still in Afghanistan. And, and the point I make in the article is that the situation isn't going to improve. Mm -hmm. uh, so, at whatever point we are tired enough of this again yeah. or have a president that is that actually wants to end the war yeah. um and they go in and start negotiating again they're not going to be negotiating from any better position the no. the only difference the only thing that will have changed is how many people will have died exactly and and i, I looked at some statistics um when we, or the other day when all of this first came up i didn't realize we had at some point like a hundred thousand troops in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, during the Obama like, surge. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's to, to think that you could have that many people in a country like this and still not make any headway and still be losing ground because the stuff I was reading was saying that we had all of, we basically, we had all these people there and they didn't want to release exactly where things stood. Mm -hmm. But by all indications, we were losing ground to the Taliban. Yeah. Um, during that, during the surge, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just, it's insane. And to let it just keep pressing on this way. Those people are defending their homes. It's absolutely true. I mean, you know, like it or not, I mean, that's that's the fact of the matter is that this is their homeland. Yeah. And, I mean, it's the same thing as Vietnam. You can win every battle and still lose the war. Yeah, exactly. And and Something. we're not even winning every battle. No, no, by <laughs> no means. And and it's it's just really sad because you can and you can look back at history in Afghanistan. I mean, Russia went through the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did. I think I don't know how long Russia was there, but yeah. I mean, they they eventually realized that this is not a winnable war. It's yeah. just it's not. Well, it's it's gotten the reputation of being the graveyard of empires. Yeah. Uh, so Alexander got stuck there too. Really? Um, and the, that's as far as the Romans were able to expand as well. Yeah. Uh, and they couldn't hold on to it either. And yeah. The Russians and then us. I mean, yeah. the the biggest, most powerful militaristic civilizations in the history of this planet... <laughs> have never been able to conquer this. Yes, yeah. have gotten stuck in Afghanistan. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just the terrain. It's 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 not good for an invading force. No, no, definitely You know, I mean, it's just the, the home field advantage is big there. Mm-hmm. So. And the home field advantage is big everywhere. It is. Uh, so it's it's more reason to to do what we suggest, which is to contract back and defend defend the United States, mm -hmm. uh, because we'll be very effective at that. Yeah. And uh, it would save us a lot of money. You don't yeah. need this giant standing army to defend the United States because the Taliban they're not a big standing army. It's yeah. it's a bunch of goat herders that have picked up <laughs> rifles. Yeah. And the same thing can be true here in the U.S. and has been in the past. Yeah. Um, there wasn't really an organized army in the Revolutionary War. I mean, yeah. they got militias together that were were reasonably organized, but compared to the British Army, the standing British Army, which was the most powerful army in the world at that time. It was a bunch of farmers who had picked up rifles, but they were defending their properties. Yeah, and that's the difference. When it's when it's your land, it's, it's a whole other scenario. Yeah. 
Um, and then the the other big mess right now is that Israel has an election on Tuesday. Oh, and no. uh, yes, and so um, because Netanyahu is 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 in a precarious position in terms of this election, um, he is doing everything he can to get as much of the conservative vote in Israel as he possibly can. So was he on the ballot again? Yeah. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, I thought well, he had they, already won his election. He couldn't he couldn't form a government. Okay, and so they had to call for new elections. Okay, I didn't realize. Um, the, I it's that a from it's the a last weirder one. Yeah, system than those, ours. It doesn't work yeah. the same way. But I got um, you. Anyway, so they this is the the new election here in September, okay. and um, there he's on the ballot again. He's going to try and form a government again, uh, but he needs the votes and. Um, he needs uh, you know enough people that will align with his party. That's actually what it's about. That's the problem. Yeah. So um, they need to have enough representatives or whatever they call them. Yeah. Prime minister or uh, minister, ministers of parliament, I guess. Yeah. Whatever. MPs. Anyways, yeah. Um, to for him to form a, a coalition government. Okay. And so he's trying to cater to the right wing conservative vote in Israel. And uh, the way he's doing that is he's dropping bombs all over the place. Um, that that's how it works here too. Yeah, no, and, it does. Uh, um, so he's dropping bombs all over the place on the uh, the Shia militias, um, including the Shia militias that we are aligned with in Iraq. Really? <laughs> yes. So they they have actually attacked um, U.S. allied militias in Iraq. Really. Uh, well, at the same time, and I don't know a whole lot about this because I just saw it on the ticker today. Yeah. Um, at the same time, Trump is talking about a mutual defense treaty with Israel, which would be a complete disaster for the United States. Yeah. I think. I mean, Israel already goes around, uh, you know, kicking everybody in the shins because everybody knows that if if they attacked Israel, that um, the U.S. would is likely to get involved. Yeah. And now Trump's talking about like really formalizing. Uh, yeah, an agreement on yeah. that. Yeah, and it, with that in writing, signed and and certified, etc. I just can't imagine that. It was particularly if somebody like Netanyahu yeah. is in control of the government, them yeah. not stepping up their militarism in the surrounding territories. Because, yeah. like it or not, um, no matter what you think of Israel being the only democracy in the area, and all of these excuses that I hear as to why we need to align ourselves with them. Uh, they are not defending their borders. They yeah. are expanding. They are expanding. And they have been since, at least since the 60s, um, yeah. and I would say before that. I, I would say as soon as they were established as their their own country, they've been trying to expand out there. And hmm. they've been doing an effective job of it. And even though they are illegally, according to the UN, occupying territory in Gaza and the West Bank um, and the Golan Heights, uh, it's just been accepted. They just like they they just do it. Yeah, yeah. And, no, nobody's stepping in to stop them. So, mm -hmm. and a big part of it, I think, is that the United States is the UN's police force, and uh, the United States is Isn't worried about upsetting anything. the yeah. the Jewish vote here in this country, yeah. and and the the Christian vote actually too. Uh, yeah. We can't let Jerusalem, you know. <laughs> it's bad enough that the Jews control Jerusalem, but we can't let it to fall to the Muslims. Yeah, because that would somehow that be would worse. Be, yeah, yeah, somehow worse. So, anyway, yeah. um, that's a that's a that's a real rabbit hole. We we could do a whole episode on that at some point yeah. and uh, make sure that we never get any funding from anybody. <laughs> All right. That's not a problem thus far. Anyway, yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> we we are entirely self funded, by yes. the way. So. That's that's why you don't hear any advertisements, and we say things that we probably shouldn't. But we can, yeah. And I don't mind. I, I it doesn't bother me to uh, to to piss people off with with my opinion. With the I truth, I do it all the time. <laughs> with the truth, man, dropping truth bombs. So um, there's there's that uh, Hong Kong still going, yeah. Um, and they're you know, clearly. The protests, which are leaderless, are somehow incredibly organized. Yeah. Uh, although they're they're obviously not actually leaderless. Yeah. Um, they've been well trained by U.S. Um, yeah. National Endowment for Democracy and so forth. That literally has classes on how to uh, how to drum up a protest and how to um, try and incite the law enforcement wherever it is to overreact. 
yeah. so that you can get some international involvement. Yeah. And uh, of course, the you know, they're now they're petitioning at the U.S. embassy in Hong Kong to like, come on, America, why aren't you coming to help us? <laughs> you know, well, I've so. seen a lot of things online as far as Hong Kong's concerned, where they the protesters really embrace American ideas, I guess, or whatever. Um, a lot of a lot of pro Second Amendment flat signs and mm. and things of that nature. Well, a lot of the leaders of the leaderless protest are very closely aligned with the U.S. Yeah, educated here, funded by various NGOs from the United States, etc. So yeah, so that kind of makes sense. Mm. And then you know the rest is British aligned because they they used yeah. to be the British. They territory. were part of yeah originally. Um. So that's a that's a fair rundown, I guess. The Brexit, yeah. the Brexit would be our other international. Bre- Brexit is still <laughs> going on. Um, still don't know how that's going to shake out. Well, I you know I said six months ago they're going to not leave in October, and yeah. uh, they'll somehow um, end up with another referendum. It's really looking hard. There's a big push to take it that way right now. Yeah. Um, I would have to say for uh, for Boris, he does seem to be trying really hard to just get us out. <coughs> and they say this is a, an assault on their democracy, him trying to shut down the government and, and all that yeah. um, just to get it done. And uh, I think that that's funny because they already had their vote. Well, that's that's <laughs> what – the the big thing that I heard the other day that the, um, the people who don't want out are pushing – is that is something that was never in the referendum. So they, they claim that, well, the, the referendum was, was to leave with a deal. No, no. But that was never the, that was never the idea. The, the referendum was to leave. Yeah. There was no mention of a deal or no deal situation. So, I mean, the people voted to leave, period. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. The referendum was, will I stay or will I go? Exactly. So they've they've brought this whole must have a deal thing out, and I mean I think they'd be just as well to leave without a deal. Yeah, they're still part of the WTO and so forth. There is a yeah, framework. There's a framework for this. It's not, but when you when you watch it on the news, even um, no matter where you watch it, you hear nothing about that. Yeah. That's that's never the. It's all the tragedy it'll be if they yeah. leave without oh, a deal. Oh, and they are really hyping up the fear too. Oh, oh we're gonna yeah. We're going to run out of food. We're going to run out of medicine. We're going to quickly become a third world country. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. But it's also probably not going to happen that they leave. I, I foresee what you've been saying for a while. Yeah. It's looking more and more that way. If, if Looks, so. Yeah, European democracy is, is even farther down the road than the United States democracy is as as really just being the illusion of democracy. Yeah, that we'll let you vote and we will do exactly what you say as long as you vote do as long as you right vote way. for what we want. Yeah. yeah, as long as as long as the vote goes the way we want it, yeah. and when it don't. We're just going to vote again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so eventually gonna, you'll get the right answer. <laughs> yeah. We're going to make what you voted for intolerable and then ask you if you want to vote again. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly what they're doing. And that's, a, I mean, that's textbook what's going on right now. Yeah. So. Um, so I guess that's the rundown of the international news. Is there something yeah. else you wanted to address? Yeah. I figured we'd talk about the the vaping crisis as, as it is – Watching the media, that's the only yeah. thing I think you can really call it. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think that's probably a good topic, too, because uh, somebody told me last night that – or was it last night? Maybe Friday night. Um, they said, well, everybody's a libertarian now. I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> he said, well, because of the vaping thing. Like, everybody's suddenly a libertarian. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, okay. Well, good. <laughs> well, it's it's an interesting subject it, because it's – what's what's happening right now is – and it's it's – if you watch the media, it's really hard to kind of just out what's really going on. And it's taken a few weeks for, of watching this unfold to kind of, for me, myself even, to kind of figure out, okay, what direction is this heading? What's, what, are, what are they trying to do here? Because it's been clear for weeks now that I keep seeing these reports and, and stuff that, that something's going on here. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's been hard to tell exactly what. Well, the best I can tell we're there we're pretty well watching the formation of a monopoly come out Mm -hmm. and so we talk on the podcast a lot about you really can't have a monopoly without government intervention right and they truly free market a monopoly just won't form because so there will always be competition well it'll be at least short-lived yeah i mean it may come out but at Mm -hmm. some point 
someone will come out with a way to to produce the product cheaper and better mm -hmm. and and it'll or just differently or just differently yeah mm -hmm. i mean there's but the so what we're watching here is you you see these reports about people um being in the hospital teenagers and this that and the other everything i can tell at this point all of these instances are from the thc involved um vape pens Mm -hmm. um, that seems to be the, the problem is it's a little hazy because everybody that uses the THC versions also use the regular ones for the most part, at least as far as the people that are ending up in the hospital. But what's going on, it seems is that it's not, it's not every THC pen that has this problem. Mm -hmm. It's the ones that are coming from the underground. Mm -hmm. So from the black market. So most States, this isn't a legal activity. So, like, you've got Colorado, you've got California. Some of these places you can get THC vape legally, yeah. the oils and whatnot. But um, in the states where you can't, they're, they're buying stuff and they're producing these products and they're using a vitamin E oil. Mm -hmm. And the vitamin E oil seems to be what is causing this. Yeah. That when they, when you, that's just not something you need to be putting in your lungs. Mm -hmm. Well, and they're not having this problem in Europe. Yeah. Um, it, it's... And it may just be that it's not really being reported, or it's yeah. hard to say. But um, from what I what I understand from the reports I've seen, yeah, like this problem is a United States problem, yeah, not a European and problem. And vaping is just as popular over there as it is here. Yeah, I mean it's it's everywhere pretty much. Yeah. Um, and I I, I kind of wonder about that too because I um, I learned in while they've been covering this stuff over the last couple of weeks that the vaping technology has been around for a decade or more. Yeah. Um, but it's only been in the last, like, maybe two years yeah. that it became really popular. And it yeah. became really, really well, popular. I, I, let me tell you what, and this is just me theorizing, so I can't really say one way or the other here. But my guess would be that the THC vape, vape stuff is what's made it as popular as it is. Because a lot of people that... Because so within the past few years, you've had Colorado and you've had some of these places go full recreational legal. And I think once people kind of realized, hey, I can I can vape my marijuana now. Um, maybe I should vape just in general. Um, I, I, I would imagine that has a lot to do with the popularity growth. Yeah. But um, but the the legal vapes that vape pens that you get with the THC stuff doesn't seem to be where the problem is. The problem is in the black market where these yeah. things, where the, the places where they're not legal, and so people are producing these things underground, mm -hmm. seems to be where where the problem is, yeah. where people are getting these things. Well, and um, like we were talking about a couple of weeks ago with the opioid thing, uh, you're penalizing an industry that for a few things that have gone wrong yeah. when – there are some real benefits to it as well. Yeah. There are a lot of people who have successfully quit smoking cigarettes yeah. or cigars or pipes whatever or whatever. Whatever the case may be. You know. And um, and that's that's a big part of this. So um, a lot of people, have, like you say, have quit smoking due to that. And, and that's a positive because while I always tell people that you're just trading one for the other mm -hmm. and nobody knows what the long-term effects of vaping right. are, but it's pretty well – received that it's probably better than tobacco yeah. because we know what the t effects of tobacco are right. and while there may be long-term side effects to vaping and i'm there, sure there will be there will be there's no question in my mind that there will be i still don't think they will be as bad as as if you smoke cigarettes yeah well there's certainly some misinformation out there i remember particularly when um this was first getting really popular and people would smoke those vape pens and, and the big, heavier ones. The big ones, yeah, um, that come out with these huge yeah. clouds that fill a room. They And they would. Yeah, Like literally. inside, in yeah. places, in restaurants and shops and so forth. Oh, yeah. And, All and of a sudden, saying to a... people like, dude, what are you, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, well, it's, it's just water vapor. Yeah. Like, it doesn't smell like a sprinkler, so clearly it's not just <laughs> water vapor. Yeah, it's because uh, it smells like cotton candy or whatever the yeah, case may or be. Purple. Yeah, or purple. Yeah, <laughs> or purple. Yeah, like that. So, uh, but like, yeah. at least there people are going outside. I, I did, I yeah. did actually myself yell at some people about. Well, not yell at people, yeah. but um, yeah. suggest that they take those outside <laughs> Out, to outdoors. smoke. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, and I, and we fight that with the store that I run and not so much anymore, but there was a time where I used to have to tell people, look, you cannot do that in here. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, no I mean, smoking doesn't mean just cigarettes. Yeah. No smoking <laughs> means no smoking. I'm yeah. sorry. Like I, I get that, you know, I'm sorry, but it's just the world we live in. Man. Yeah. <laughs> So and I got some pushback for some people over it, but it's you know I it's it's like, it's, it's, it it's a courtesy. Me. It's it, mm-hmm. to me that's all it is. Is right. it's a courtesy not to do that around other people. You know, yeah. no, if you're outside, fine, go for it. But if we're in a room together, let's not do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so unless you're you know everybody's partaking or something like that. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. So no, I mean, like I say, the the. But the other thing, so the FDA came out and they're going to, they've already pretty well made the decision. They're going to start regulating these things. And they've brought it out, I think, over a nine-month span, how they're going to roll this ban out. Um, And basically what this ban is going to end up doing is it's going to shut down the local vacant shops. So all of these, and you see them, they're everywhere. Every town's got one or two of them. Um, and it looks like what that's, this is pretty well going to do away with that. Yeah. And it's going to open up the market for basically Jewel. You'll probably have one or two other major ones. Mm-hmm. They're going to be able to afford to get the licenses and do the things required by the FDA to get to be able to produce and sell these products. Well, okay. So then it's not really the local vape shops that are going to get shut down. It's going to be the local vape producers, like small yeah, time that's, that's manufacturers what, but, that are going to get shut down. Yeah, but that's what basically these vape shops are. Oh, okay. Basically the way, and I'm not in this industry, so I don't know. I mean, if somebody knows better, please correct me. Mm-hmm. But my understanding is the way these vape shops work is they order and they have all this stuff and they kind of mix some of their own and they put them together. That's why you can go into these places and get custom flavors and get whatever. Each one kind of has a little bit different stuff. Okay. Um, Never been in one of these places. I, I did not, me either. Like I said, this is all kind of secondhand information from people I know that do it. Mm-hmm. But one of the big things that the, that the FDA was touted during this or said during this was that the – there, that these companies are marketing this stuff towards children because of the flavors and whatnot. And that's just, it couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, it may be true that kids like these flavors as well, but every adult that I know that mm-hmm. vapes, vapes a flavor. Yeah. I mean, I know they make tobacco flavored ones, but that's not where most people go. Yeah. Even people I know that are quitting smoking and go into the vape thing to try to wean themselves off or things like that, they've all got some cloud of, like purple or cotton candy yeah. or something that or they're blue. putting, or yeah, <laughs> that they're putting in the air that is. Uh, it smells like blue. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so that 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 argument just really doesn't hold water with me. And what it is is it's a push. There's Jewel and some of these companies have mainly Jewel. Jewel's the big one mm-hmm. um, because if I'm not mistaken, they're owned by R.J. Reynolds, who produces Marlboro and all of that. R.J. Reynolds is Camel. Is it Camel? Um, yeah, Marlboro is Philip Morris. Oh, you're right. It is. Yeah. yeah. I, I get these confused. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, they're the ones that, that have Jewel, and they're, they've are they got an army of lobbyists right now oh, that, sure. are, that are really pushing. And they want this ban because all that's going to do is that's going to force everyone out of the market. And basically, if you want to use one of these things, they're who you're going to go to. Yeah. And here's this is another example of government trying to fix a problem and creating a bigger problem. Um, because uh, if, you, if you ban all this stuff, or let's just even just start with the THC issue. Yeah. Um, because you're not having problems from the, uh, the stuff that's being produced in states where it's legal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you could make the argument that it's you know it's because it's regulated, but okay, fair enough. Yeah, we'll just accept that for now. Yeah. Um, then the problem that you created by keeping it banned in other states is that you push it underground, yeah. and then the underground producers aren't aren't doing it correctly. Well, and, they're, and they're completely unregulated. Well, like if you believe in regulation, then they're completely unregulated. Yep. And uh, and you're going to run into the same problem if you push all these smaller producers out of the market. They're not actually going to leave the market. Making a <coughs> law doesn't stop anybody from doing anything. Yeah. What you do is they, you push it underground. Again. I was going to say, they'll go from having a storefront where people come in and buy this stuff. And if something goes wrong with something they bought, yeah. can be held accountable Till they're now they're selling it out of their living room, yeah, or and guess, back door of a warehouse, or wherever, or wherever. And guess what? They're not accountable there at all, yeah, because they shouldn't have been doing it in the first place. Yeah, um, the the great thing about 
a lack of regulation in a free market is that you don't have people hiding and yeah. you know to produce their products yeah. and then you can hold people accountable when things go wrong exactly um, and there's there's no way that you can hold people accountable when it's a completely underground industry and what's ironic about this entire situation from where I'm sitting at least mm-hmm. is that the issues that are occurring in this market right now are from the underground market. Mm-hmm. So the government is going to step in and basically create more underground yeah. market. Let's go ahead and enlarge the underground market because that's where the problem is Because that's from. where the problem is actually coming from. Yeah. It's just that it never ceases to amaze me, man, how, how government mm-hmm. can screw things up. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, there, you know, this is one of those things that it's hard to argue from a libertarian perspective because yeah. essentially the big argument here is, well, these, these companies need to be regulated. Yeah. But that's not really the case. Yeah. The companies need to be held accountable. Yeah. And when they're regulated, they're not necessarily held accountable either. If yeah. you got the, if you know the right people. Yeah. RJRTC is never going to get in a ton of trouble for anything that they do wrong because no. they have the lobbyists and they can influence the politicians and the courts and everything else. Follow the money. Um, They've got the money to, to take care of any problem that comes their way. Yeah. Um, and that may or may not be true in a free market. I would say that you know what the problem that you run into there is that the government controls all aspects of the legal system. Yeah. Um, you know, from uh, interpretation to enforcement to uh, judgment. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, uh, the punitive stuff. Yeah. So that's uh, that's an issue of its own, and you know, we've talked plenty of times before about you know, spending some time on that. Yeah. Um, but I would I would really like to get one of the attorneys <coughs> in here to talk about that. Yeah, I uh, agree. But the you know this, the other side of this is that in a, in a free market, the successful businesses, the businesses that produ- provide the best products at the lowest price, they're the ones that survive. Yeah. Um, and if you don't have any reason to hide in the shadows, then it's much easier to hold anybody accountable for anything that goes wrong. Yeah. It's very true. Um, and of course, you know, going again back to the opioid thing, it has to be something that goes wrong because of a, an error in manufacturing, not an error in use. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, and that's, that's a whole nother thing because I mean, these things have a tendency to blow up. I watched mm-hmm. some YouTube videos the other day, kind of in preparation for this of people, but usually that's not the, – the chances of that happening like with a jewel or something like that are relatively low. Usually what that is is somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. Accidentally has, put some glycerin in it? Well, no. They purchase – and I, like I say, I'm not in this industry, so I don't know. But they purchase some – they purchase a bunch of stuff from somewhere mm-hmm. and then they start putting it all together and they, they do the wattage wrong or something. Mm-hmm. And, and they yeah, – I mean – like really low – current yeah things aren't they yeah. they're they're yeah most of them are and most most of the vapes that you buy have a very very low chance of something like that happening and it's the custom ones where that where you see stuff like that okay. um when you've got the people that's got these like i see them with these just I, you can't see my hands obviously but they're just huge you know mechanisms that yeah. they use huge batteries and whatnot it's like carrying around a microscope yeah kind well of i remember for a, yeah i remember <laughs> for a while that was the thing people carried them on lanyards around their neck you yeah. used to see people you don't see that anymore but for a long time that was like the thing like yeah. well, they're down to those little pins that well, are now you just stick them in your pocket like, yeah. yeah skinny little things and you see people walking around with a hookah around their neck <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. um but Yeah, I mean, I I would tell everybody to just kind of keep your eyes open and watch this deal play out because I do believe over the next year you're gonna watch a you're gonna watch a monopoly form Mm -hmm. in in real time, and and it's gonna be through the arm of government Mm -hmm. because just remember they they're not a monopoly now. Jewel does not own the market as far Mm -hmm. as it's concerned. I mean, they're the best product out there as far as if you want just to use a vape, but they in no way hold the whole market. Um, the, the the biggest share of the market is in the mom and pop, the small vape shops and whatnot. Yeah. And, and you're going to see that go away. And it's, you know, it just, it's, I don't know. It makes me mad. Like I don't, yeah. even, I'm not even involved in the industry at all. I mean, I could care less one way or the other, but it still irritates me. Yeah. It just, it feels like a little bit of freedom going away. Mm-hmm. Well, this is a really common thing that happens is that um, the companies that are the best the biggest, not necessarily the best, but the biggest and the most established will push for 
new legislation regulating their industry. Yep. And it's not because they actually want to make things safer for you. It's because they want to raise the barrier to entry to any competition. Exactly. And, um, and this, this is, is a big one in the car industry. That's why you mm-hmm. always hear them. Well, the the because they all, you, when you hear it on the news, they always push it. Well, even the car manufacturers are pushing for these better. It's it's usually either safety regulations yeah. or fuel efficiency. Yeah, because who could argue with that? Yeah, exactly. Nobody wants to be you know for worse, more polluting cars. You know, mm-hmm. unless you're a libertarian like me, and I just sit in the driveway in my vet, just <laughs> giving it the gas, man. Your 1980s vet. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> Come on, man. Put that stuff in the air. Yeah. Let me see that big cloud. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah. Um. It, it is a. It's a really common theme. Uh. It. And uh, it's a play. That, it's a play the, that works. Yeah. To go back to the monopoly thing. The what we'd say is that a monopoly can only form in a free market if you only have a single company that actually produces the best product at the lowest price yeah. that answers everybody's needs. Yep. Um, and even if you have the best product at the lowest price, you'll run into competition in a free market from a company that produces a high end version. Yeah. It's not the best product. It's yeah. definitely not the best price, yeah. but it's it becomes like a status symbol for the, the wealthy <laughs> yeah. or whatever. It's and, got such and such name on it, and yeah. that's the gold standard. You yeah. know? And so then you know you have people that, that they split the market share through various means. And another thing that, that happens a lot is that these big companies have a hard time adjusting quickly. Yeah. So if there's a new innovation in the market – they have a hard time moving over their entire manufacturing process to take advantage of this new thing. Yeah. Whereas a smaller company is more agile in that regard yeah. and they can, they can quickly take over. Or if you just don't adapt to new circumstances. I mean, think yeah. about Kodak. Kodak is always the prime example, right? <laughs> yes, like Kodak, they are. Kodak owned the film industry. Yeah. The, you know, they absolutely <laughs> owned the film industry. And when digital started, they were like, oh, well, this is just a fad. Yeah. Like, we don't have to worry about this thing. And there's no Kodak anything. The, yeah, Kodak don't do jack. Now. They're gone. Well, and and that's that is a prime example of that because and it's amazing that they couldn't see it coming mm-hmm. because anybody that that uses digital for any amount of time is like, dude, this is far superior. Yeah. Like, I mean, I can take my picture and have it right now. Yeah. Like, I well, mean, and think about the internet stuff. Uh, yeah. You know, um, Netscape uh, Navigator, AOL. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you know, there's a lot. I mean, AOL still exists, but. There was a time where they, the shadow they of owned it, the internet, and yeah. they are not a very small player now. Oh yeah, yeah, they're owned by somebody else now. Yeah. I, I yeah. laugh when people give me AOL addresses at this point. I'm yeah. just like, wow, really? Yeah, Seriously, you've had this for like thirty years, <laughs> you, I guess. You held on to this, for, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, so, so if you if you leave the market open, it'll self correct. It may not do it as quickly as you'd like, but it usually. Uh, creates less problems that when than when the government steps in and does it by fiat. Yep. And uh, so that's why that's why we believe in a free market. A free market is going to more effectively cater to what everybody wants. Yeah. And um, it it will adjust to what people what people want. And the main thing is and I, you know people look at me funny when I say this all the time. The free market is the most democratic system ever created. Absolutely. People can vote with their dollars. Yep. It's, I mean, you know, people with more dollars get to vote more times. Yeah. But still, the, every single yeah. person, it's it's faceless. It's not directed by any one person. There's yeah. no one person that can direct any market. Exactly. Um, it is directed by the the uh, amalgamation of all these different decisions by different people that suit themselves best. Yep. Yeah. It's. I've never looked at it that way, but you make a good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's, let's end on a good point. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> that I like, like it. a good place to stop. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else that you wanted to, to hit? No, on? I mean, I think we pretty well covered it. I mean, I, the big thing I wanted to talk about was the vaping because I think we're watching something in real time and mm-hmm. it's something I'd kind of like people to pay attention to. Let's watch, watch how this plays out. Yeah. You know? So you like to vape, be libertarian. Yeah. Hey, there you go. Right. <laughs> Another great point. All right. <laughs> So, um, just hitting on all cylinders tonight. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, that sounds that does seem like a good place to end. Uh, as usual, um, follow us everywhere. Um, yeah. Subscribe on iTunes or Podbean. Um, you can follow us on Facebook, 
and iTunes. Do you follow on iTunes? I don't remember. Anyway, don't if you know. if you can do subscribe on iTunes, subscribe on iTunes. Yes. Uh, you know, check out the website from time to time. Um, as I said, there there's an article that I wrote that was published at the Libertarian Institute last week uh, called "The Last Man." Uh, check it out. Yeah. Um, Show it some love. Yeah, I'm I'm glad that it got published. You know, maybe if you put a bunch of likes on there, I I can get published more frequently. Yeah. Of course, what would really help me get published more frequently <laughs> is if you wrote more. If I wrote more. <laughs> that, this that. was kind of encouraging, though. I mean, yeah. I, you know, it made me feel like, and it's easier in the winter when I don't have to get up in the morning on the weekends and do a bunch of yard work. Right hey, there, you go. <laughs> so that that saves me a little bit of time. If I spend three hours, like you know, sweating out in the yard on a Saturday <laughs> morning, I don't want to come back in and write. Yeah. I, like, I just want to take a shower and lay down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm getting old. So. We're in the South, man. It's hard out there. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. <laughs> it's rough. It sucks everything out of you. It does. <clears throat> um, and so uh, until next time. Oh, we did want to announce that we're like schedule's oh, going to be weird. Yeah. Um. So between me and Mike, we've got just a lot going on right now. I've got kids in softball and work obligations are fixing to get very heavy going into the holiday season. Uh, we do want to try to keep a podcast out every week, but it may not be on the usual day like it normally is. Yeah. And and there may, there may be weeks that just slip through the cracks. We're going to try our best not to let that happen. Yeah. But um, it, it may happen. Yeah, um, work obligations can be difficult for me this time of year, too. They're kind of unpredictable. Um, so between the two of us, like, it was already difficult to find a night yeah, and that it's... we could consistently do it. And now our night that we can consistently do it is out, period, for yeah. at least a couple of months. Yeah. I got that softball schedule, and I was like, oh, yeah. it's like every Thursday. Man, like, it's hell just... having kids. Yeah, yeah. all right. <laughs> what um, you going to do? So... Uh, We'll we'll do what we can to get something out every week, but it it may not be on the normal day. Um, we'll try to keep you, um, you know, enticed with various things that we'll post on the website. Yeah, that we we're going to do been a making little, more of an effort to just get something up. We're going to get do a better effort to get stuff up there consistently. Yeah, even if it's not something that's ours, just something to to keep you thinking or to yeah. you know. By the way, I loved that Chris Ann Hall thing that you put up. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was that was really good. Do you trust your government now and forever in the future yeah. <laughs> to not use the force of government to deprive you of life, liberty, or property? Yeah. If the answer to that is no, the gun debate's over. The gun debate's and, over, right? There, you know, man. since they're actually do using the force of government to deprive you of uh, at least liberty and property <laughs> um, right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a really good argument to it, make. That, I thought that one was really good. Yeah, it's it's a good one, man. Um, I got to get back out and see her again. She's she's a, definitely a fun yeah, lecture. If, if she's, anybody has an opportunity to see her do a lecture, it's it's worth going to. She's yeah. very passionate and she knows her stuff better than anybody, man. Yeah. When it comes to the Constitution, you're not going to find much anybody that I know of that's going to present it like she does. Yeah, and you can see some of her lectures on uh, YouTube as well. As and so, yeah. if you have any questions about whether you would enjoy it or not, just watch one there. Yeah, you'll be hooked. I mean, if, if you love the Constitution, you will be hooked. <laughs> yeah. She's done some stuff on C-SPAN, too, that was, that's been really good. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, uh, yeah, that's the end. Then The end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know, follow us everywhere. Subscribe where you can. Uh, like and share. Um, that certainly helps us. And uh, we'll see you again next time um, in, in where we try to get it right. And in the meantime, try and stay free. Train how you fight. Ciao. Later.